Day six, locus of control. The extent to which people believe they have power over events in their lives is directly related to their locus of control. Right, let me explain that. A person with an internal locus of control believes that he or she can influence events and their outcomes, while someone with an external locus of control blames outside forces for everything. If you have an internal locus of control, you believe you affect the outcome, good or bad, of your decisions and you accept responsibility for what happens in your life. If you have an external locus of control, you think everything happens to you and you're basically a victim of circumstance. It's in my genes. It was fate. K sera sera. Obviously, an internal locus of control is where we want to operate. Psychologists have been considering the question of our locus of control since the 1950s. Those with an external locus of control have a sense of life happening to them. They believe their lives are primarily influenced by forces outside their control. Those with an internal locus of control, by contrast, feel in charge of their own destiny and attribute success or failure to their own efforts. An internal locus of control yields vastly superior results. One representative study finds it has been linked with academic success, high self-motivation, and social maturity, lower incidences of stress and depression, and longer lifespan. It might be tempting to view locus of control as an innate personality trait or genetic genes associated, that sort of thing in your DNA, just like the tendency to be introverted or extroverted. But researchers like Stanford psychologist Carol Dweck see it not as fixed or static quality, but as a learned skill. And like any skill, it can be practiced and consciously cultivated. This is where that subconscious mind is coming into play and while we're doing this visualization. Super important and totally scientific. So something closely associated with locus of control is having either a bias toward action, do it now, or a bias toward thinking, procrastination. So if someone tells you, I might go to your party or I'll think about it. They're not going. Just, just saying. Just give me that little side right there. Anyway, back to the subject. If you give yourself and your brain enough time, you will talk yourself out of your workout, out of eating healthy, out of going to bed at a decent hour, etc., etc. We all want to wait until we feel like it. But unfortunately, our feelings rarely encourage us on a consistent basis, especially when we are forming new habits or changing or replacing mediocre ones with good ones. Many times, feelings follow action, not preceded. And then over time, we remember how good we feel in association with that habit and feelings begin to come with the action taken. But how do we get there from here? Again, we go with the subconscious mind and what and doing our uh, imaginative process, that little five minute practice in the morning when you wake up and in the evening of seeing yourself on the inside already. And you're depositing more and more of that image into your subconscious and your subconscious is just gonna reproduce that. And eventually, that's going, you're going to find that out in your external world, in your tangible world. It just happens. Sometimes it takes longer than others, but if you stick with it, you are bound for success. So anyway, that leads us right back to our continuing practice of meditation. Uh, continue to fine tune it. And um, remember, it's a fun exercise. It's not to be feel like work. Because when it starts feeling like work, then you need to stop and just relax and just go do something else. But just, you know, continue. You're just, you know, having fun with it. It should, uh, like I say, make you feel good. So that's day six. Stay tuned for day seven tomorrow.